Hey everyone. You'll see all these, so let's wait a little bit. Hey, Brandon, is somebody copying over the template? Um, I think this is the template for today, right? 0 to 17. Hey, oh, did I miss something? Hey, Eli. Wait, Emily, I, I, did I miss something? Oh. No, I got my dates mixed up. I was thinking it was <laughs> next week already. <laughs> oh, thank God it isn't. What are you guys talking about? No, we, we had some um, calendar troubles. <laughs> As you yeah, know. <laughs> I, I like four different calendars because it's hard to see. Yeah, <laughs> Emily is having calendar troubles. That's the problem. Like, we, we, we need good tool for synchronized calendars. <laughs> what, what's a SIG without problems with calendars? Like, I don't know, it's like every single one I made, I could never sync it up. <laughs> I need SIG calendar. <laughs> <laughs> Feel like SIG that's calendar just calendar causes the problem with calendars. <laughs> All right, we'll give it a couple more minutes. Do you guys know if uh, Andres will be joining? I heard he had like bad accident. I don't know. I know he's that he here. has been active in Slack. Oh, okay. he's, he's here. That's good. All right, I'm gonna paste the uh, meeting notes in again, just because it doesn't show. Yeah, I hope I have um, been attending this meeting for a while. It's like end of the year was crazy. Lots of stuff. I hope I'm going to be able to share my screen later. <clears throat> I updated my Mac and there's like a ton of permission things that uh, come up. So <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> OK, uh, I think let's get started. So um, kind of as usual, this, um, this meeting is recorded. And as part of the CNCF, um, you know, just keep the um, CNCF guidelines and be nice and friendly. Um, so today we have two topics. Um, we are looking for scribes. So if anyone can help um, scribe for today's meeting, that would be good. Um, so we'll be going through kind of updates on um, just going around today and then we have two main issues that we will talk about um, if you have not already done so i'm going to paste in the meeting link again for those that just joined uh, please go in put in your name and the uh, attendance and uh, if you have any updates just put a message or if you're new to the group put a message and then we will get around to introductions cool 
thanks to Tay for setting up the scribe. Um, all right, so let's get started. Uh, let's see, no dates. Um, well, you, Mark, you, you didn't have an update, but you had a short question about blockchain. What's that? Sure, I'll uh, keep this short. So we, uh, because of some recent uptick in interest in cryptocurrency stuff, I just wondered if we had any open PRs or threads on blockchain here. Either from like there's a distributed identity foundation is you know working on the identity side. They have, uh, I think, a storage uh, section that worries about that stuff. But I don't know that it's come up here, has it? Not that I've seen in the issues at least. So I'll. Uh, I'll think about a way to maybe introduce it for a cloud native audience that might be relevant. Um, and I'll put into the chat a, and also in the notes here, so don't worry about copying it over for the scribe, um, a list of the IEEE standards body uh, groups that are working on blockchain. It's pretty amazing. They've got a lot of stuff going on. A lot of it doesn't end up being a standard, uh, but just the diversity of interest there is kind of interesting. So that's Absolutely. it, I'll put, it to, put the rest in the chat. Uh, there's also a lot of uh, blockchain related stuff happening in the confidential computing consortium. Uh, the focus there being it's more uh, energy efficient to perform blockchain like uh, calculations inside a trust execution on, uh, environment or an enclave rather than on general purpose compute. So stuff happening over there. I don't know if there's interest in, in bringing folks in, but uh, I'm happy to connect if there, if there is. Well, we should be interested for moral reasons, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's an interesting thought. I feel like that's, that's kind of counterintuitive. You usually think about anything that runs within some kind of security hardware to be so, so all, all you know, that, that's the trade of that. So um, that should be an interesting discussion. Uh, maybe we can make it one of the topics uh, next time. Um, okay, that's going down. So Emily has an update that's already in the agenda. Uh, Andrea, um, did, did you have a- You skipped me. Oh, sorry. That's uh, all right. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to do a quick update from the um, TOC meeting on Tuesday, which I attended, where um, they talked about renaming the SIGs. So they are proposing calling our group a technical advisory group or a tag. So there is an open issue on GitHub where the TOC is voting on a new name for our group. So I thought everybody might be interested. Um, so I'll put the GitHub issue in the um, notes, but, um, but it's also on the CNCF slash TOC. Um, and then um, also more substantively, um, the Liz Rice, who's the chair of the TOC, brought up um, the idea of actually having as part of the graduation criteria um, a that projects would have a process for security things, like that for um, for people to submit security issues and have that documented process. And that's one of the things that we look through in the assessments. It's also part of the um, it's part of the uh, uh, CII badge, but this would be calling it out that the, and I propose that this happen at incubation, which was wild, roundly s seconded um, so that projects at incubation would all, all they have to do is say, this is what you do when you find a security issue. So people felt that was a low bar. Um, I did say that it might be, people were worried about like, that there might be projects that are already in incubation that might not know how to do this. So I wanted to, um, see if there's anybody who might volunteer to help audit the projects that are incubated and graduated to see if there are ones that, you know, like to provide data to the TOC to say, oh, you know, 90% of them have it, you know, whatever. Um, I'd suspect that most projects have it, uh, but I don't know for sure. So Sarah, is this kind of like uh, seeing that they have a process to handle these things? Yeah, I mean, okay. for most projects, like it's in the readme, do this if you have a security issue. Um, okay. But in the assessments, we've found some projects that don't have that well documented. 
Yeah, I remember we had like a section in the assessments that's like, what are the security response? Or at least we were discussing this initially when we were talking about assessments, but there wasn't really a um, benchmark to compare that against. So uh, is there already an issue open for this or should we? Open no, it? I just, I, I, can, I'll, I can open an issue and then anybody who wants to help with it could chime in. So, so would that be like, cause any of the incubated projects that I've seen kind of have like a security audit kind of line, right? Would that be just, here's the process that was engaged by, you know, during the graduation process and then there's a link to stats or something like that? Or how, No, what, this, that? it's, it's totally different topic. So this okay. is somebody who's a user of the project finds a security issue or believes they have, what do they do? So, so there's a reporting security vulnerabilities as well, right? So you can, you know, if there is anything, then that's part of the, but it's basically somebody has to, is it an external person validating that? I'm just trying to understand. No, no, it's just that there is a process. Got it. For reporting and then communicating the ones that are security vulnerabilities. So there are a lot of projects that aren't security focused, right? And they're like, you know, they might not have come up for them because they think, oh, we don't have anything to do with security. They, can't, they don't have the insight. They're less mature. They might have people, you know, like at incubation, you don't need a lot of users, right? You just need to be, you know, there's a bunch of criteria. And so it could still be experimental in some way, but it has nothing to do with security and they just don't have security experts on their team and they don't foresee it happening. But of course, as we all know, just documenting a process, how they can get in. Okay, get, got it. Makes yeah. makes complete. Exactly. It's actually a very very good idea. Yeah. So um, so yeah, I'll write that up as a GitHub issue. Would love to have um some help doing that. Now, actually, the, the, it is for yeah. CII best practices a requirement to have a documented vulnerability reporting process, and it is required for a process to move from sandbox to incubation to have to attain a best practices batch of passing. Um, yes, and that is the a self assertion on behalf of the project. So this would be that validating it from the TOC perspective. So yeah, I guess if it is a, I didn't realize it was an incubation thing. So maybe yeah. they all have it already because they've all done the batch. Yeah, I was just, again, validating with our project. And I'm like, yeah, we have that. So that's all, I was trying to understand what the, the difference is. It basically is because there's no documented like is, is it more of a communication thing or it's just just validating that's the part i'm, I'm it's, not it's getting. validating that it actually exists got it got okay. it as part of the process to okay and, and i guess also to kind of like ask a bit more questions on that regard right if um they've had any incidents report before how did they handle it and you know what was the speed of the execution and things like that yeah with where there's some discussion that they're not going to insist to incubation any particular speed in responsiveness, but just making sure that groups have thought about it, which, yeah, you're right. If the CII best practices badge is required for incubation, then they should have already, but um, this is just sort of raising awareness. There's another rubric item in there that around the response time, I don't recall the exact exact wording or time frame, but I think it's 96 hours, providing a response within 96 hours and have addressed publicly known vulnerabilities that have been reported in the last six months. Now it's entirely up to a project whether they like not disclosing while they're working on it, right, for, for obvious reasons. So while it is a self certification, you, you need to provide a link to your policy or procedure that captures that uh, whatever the process is. So it does make matters for us easier to, hey, let's go look at the CI, but the, the batch app for this project. Let's look at this particular section. Let's see what they entered in there. What is the link? So we know where to find it in their repository structure and their directory structure, then rather try to like figure out out of band where to find it. Yeah, um, so maybe let's, let's have that issue be created and then um, we can also have it as part of the discussion if there's one or two people that wanna take the lead on the issue. 
So if the policy just needs to be something implemented in repository, that's an, the easiest way to do this through automation, like sort of for a secure scorecard, that's a good, one of the Google projects to do this. It's just checking if you have certain things in your app. Or if this is like ver formal verification that this is like really happening, what they're claiming in there, like the, the, this is like, completely manual process at all. Yeah, I it, think it's... it might start as a manual process. Like it's just really the TOC establishing, you know, elevating the security criteria with starting with something simple. Yep. Um, okay, so let's let's go along to the other updates. Um, I think the next on the list is uh, Jonathan Meadows with supply chain update. Hi. Yeah, just a quick one. So on the... Um, on uh, also, the, so, uh, sorry, there's someone that's uh, typing and the, the sounds are getting true. So you could yeah. mute if you are not talking. Thanks. Just a quick one then on the supply chain working group. Um, so we're, we're getting a lot more content onto the document. I think we're going to restructure it. I know that Emily sent through some uh, feedback. That's great. Um, I think we're probably... Uh, another uh, another session away from having something that we'll then start to go through and do editorial on and then report back more fully to the rest of the group. Um, but obviously all the work that we're doing is uh, open on that uh, uh, Google document uh, and we're also discussing it in Google chat as well. Oh, sorry, Slack. So awesome. Work continues. Yeah, if you could put the link to, to that document, yep. maybe in the mm -hmm. notes, that'd be great. Thank you. We'll do that now. All right, uh, Robert. Hi, we had our uh, policy work group uh, meeting this morning at eight o'clock Pacific. Uh, happens every other week. Uh, currently, we're, we're in a deep dive around mapping the, the policy report CRD to different frameworks, and in particular, one that's used in the federal space. Uh, from NIST called OSCO. Um, but you know, at some point we'll come up for air and, and talk to other frameworks. Um, and then I think also on the agenda, we're gonna try to build out a kind of position paper or architecture white paper on, on how all these pieces fit together. That's, that's the latest. And, and then I just had kind of a logistical question we use this same Zoom. How can we get access to the uh, videos from those meetings? So people ask for the, the, the links to the previous calls. Um, maybe we can take that offline with the, the chess and the else. So we, I think we have access to the Zoom account, but maybe we can discuss of whether we can provide access or somehow split up the videos. OK, great. Yeah. Happy to connect to you offline. Sounds good. Um, so yeah, and if, you could keep, keep us honest by just open an issue on it, because then we can tag the CNCF staff people once we figure it out. Uh, sure. Is it, is it a question where to find recordings of these meetings? Yes. No. It's like, how do we get a link to the, like this morning's 8 a.m. Uh, there, there is a link like on, on top of this uh, meeting notes to YouTube channel. Well, so that's that's the one for the six security. The policy um, videos don't get uploaded there. I got it. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, and we have Frederick Fernando, who's a new member. Do you want to give a quick introduction? Yeah. Hey guys. Uh, so yeah, my name is Frederick. Uh, I'm I'm from India. Um. I'm into, uh, so I've been working in the SOC side, the blue team side of things. And now I'm new, uh, I'm getting into Kubernetes security and uh, kind of playing around with uh, Linux internals and eBPF and things. So I, I like how, I'm really uh, amazed at how uh, you guys work here. Uh, and I learn a lot from these uh, meetings. I've been here for like uh, two or three meetings. And I really appreciate how, uh, I mean, uh, the things that I learned from you. Awesome. Welcome to the group, Patrick. Yeah. Hi. I hope you weren't in the meeting last week where you saw a really bad comedy. Don't ever learn from us from that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Or, or if you secretly want to get in on that, you can you can uh drop a DM to to pop, you know. And okay. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, so I have a question. If, if 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 you were to say, what are you hoping to take away from the group, or what are you hoping to contribute? Right, so uh, I'm okay. I'm new to okay. the uh, security. Sp- uh, I mean, sorry, the open source space. I'm more. Uh, so earlier I was into the uh, uh, Windows uh, in- infrastructure security, or uh, like threat detection, all those kind of things. But on the Windows side, so I uh, I wanna like get in on board with uh, contributing to some of the open source uh, stuff, and uh, and I re- learn a lot by just attending these uh, these things. So I'm just gonna like stay. Uh, I- I'm in for the ride. Fantastic! You're on the right place. Awesome. Yeah, feel free to reach out to to chat or TL so, or anyone in the community if you're you're interested in working on something. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Um, cool. So I think that's all the updates. I have a really quick one on my side. Um, a couple of folks in the community together with myself, we are having a cloud native, we're starting out cloud native security meetup in New York. Um, for now, of course, it's virtual. Uh, so I'll just put a link to it. There's one such that's going on next week if people are interested. Um, okay. If not, let's go ahead with the agenda item. So I'll pass the mic to Emily first to cover the security assessment improvements. Hey. Sorry, I'll inject one uh, 30 second update. Uh, Brandon, sorry, I forgot to put the update. Oh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so Justin Kepos uh, initiated an APAC friendly meeting uh, as of Tuesday. So for anyone here where the time is inconvenient, you can go look it up on the uh, read me. Uh, there is an APAC friendly time zone that you could possibly join. Uh, it's barely getting started. Uh, it's only last meeting we had two people uh, show up and uh, both of them are like super, super interesting. We learned uh, quite a bit from them. Uh, so just wanted to drop in there to give people the convenience of the time that they want to join. That's all. That's the update that I had. Thanks. Awesome. Yep. All right. Emily, all yes. All right. So for those of you that don't know, Brandon has been leading an effort within the SIG to help us do some updates and some changes to our traditional security assessment process based off of feedback from our first five assessments. Um, So there was a group of folks that got together, had an excellent brainstorming session, pulled all the feedback in um, to a consolidated area, and then we created tickets and issues so that we can break down the work into smaller areas. Um, So a lot of that work has been already contributed to the repository about like, how do we incentivize more people to join in and participate? What are the values and the benefits of the security assessments? Um, But one of the biggest things was a couple of updates to the templates as well as some new documentation to ensure that the process is um, as smooth as possible, both for the projects as well as for our SIG members. Um, So taking into consideration a ton of great feedback from the community over the past few years that we've been doing this. Um, We've created a PR called, uh, it's uh, number 488. It's been linked in the chat, um, as well as a particular comment in there that kind of does a a high level summary of what it is that we're talking about. What do these changes look like? So one of the first things um, that was recommended was the utilization of the term security assessment was confusing for some of our community members is getting mixed up with security audits and we're not really doing a full-blown assessment or a full-blown audit on it was there a better word that we could come up with that would still capture the essence of what it is that we're working on so the recommended recommended change is security review which has a more holistic capturing of what all goes on when we're performing these activities So with the change of the name, we uh, went through the documentation that we currently had, found some areas where we really could pull more from the projects to help them better um, create their security documentation based off of some of the previous assessments that we've had. And I feel like every, every assessment that we do gets better and better because we 
for getting excellent feedback. So the overall changes are kind of minimal, um, but they do make a little bit more sense and it, it creates slightly more um, artifacts as a result of these evaluation processes. So the README has been updated to provide uh, a more comprehensive overview of what the security review process is. The actual guide that talks about the security review process steps now includes more detailed information, um, links to the new documents, links to templates, there's a joint README template for the first time. This actually is a um, template that was built from the existing README's from previous project security assessments. So now that we have a standard document for um, SIG members to actually pull and summarize content into. The joint review um, template replaces the existing self-assessment template that we have. It's got a little bit more detailed sections in there based off of some of the feedback that we received. And this is the, this is the collaborative review between the project and the SIG security, security reviewers. It builds on top of the, the self-assessment, which is performed by the project. So one of the discussions for why we were going to break these two things up was to allow projects that weren't quite mature enough or at a, at a point where they could get um, or support a full joint review or a full security assessment as we traditionally perform them, could take the template themselves and kind of do an internal reflection on what is the state of their security? Um, how are their security development practices looking? Kind of guide them down that path of thinking about security and their development practices. So it's a little bit more day-to-day -day instead of a big hurdle for them later on when they would come for a security assessment. It's a much lighter weight document. It's much smaller than the joint review, but a lot of the information that's generated there gets them thinking about security in a way that when they come back for a joint review, they've got all the information put together and it should help them um, and help us when we're doing that joint review. The project lead um, information was updated with the new naming conventions and some small content updates that have needed more clarity. And now there's a review survey to go to provide with projects so that we can get consistent feedback from them on what they thought about the effectiveness and the experience of the entire security review process was. The security reviewer um, role was also updated with a new naming convention and content. So this is a very large PR. There's a lot of new content in here. There's a lot of new suggestions based off of the feedback that we've gotten from the community and the existing issues. So I wanted to bring this to everybody's attention to kind of talk about it. How do we feel about the, the content and the changes? Do we feel that it's a good direction for us to be moving in? as well as if we wanna like set another standard for another five against this new process and then reevaluate or reiterate. Awesome, and, and are, you, are we looking for kind of just a, a, a few more eyes on the, on the PR? We... Yeah, that's right. So I, I've been working on this for a while with some help from Magno and a few others, and I feel like I'm a little too close to it to do a, a fair shake on doing a review. So an extra set of eyes to make sure that everything makes sense, that we haven't missed anything, that there isn't a link in a wrong place, or that something is not clear and could be um, more, could be better explained. Uh, I, think I it's also, oh, go sorry. ahead, Sarah. Um, I read through it um, over the last week or so. Thanks for Emily for being really super responsive. Um, and one, I, I, having been a reviewer for multiple uh, security reviews, um, I, the separation of the project would check in its self-assessment. Um, and then the review team would create a new document pulling from that. My hypothesis is that that would make it easier on the project themselves because um, and put more burden on the reviewer, on the review team. And there'd have to be presumably the lead reviewer. I don't know if this was spelled out because I guess it could be anyone would be like 
taking suggested edits and committing them. Whereas in the past, it's been the project lead that takes questions and suggested edits and revises this document. And that's been like, it seems like that was a little arduous for the project lead at times because they just felt like barraged with questions. However, it puts on the, um, the security reviewer then has to assert things, right? So it, I would feel a little uncomfortable with some of the projects because I'm like, I don't know. Like sometimes I would make suggested edits being, I think this is true. And it would be comforting to have the project lead say, okay, I'm gonna commit this as truth from the project's perspective. But I think flipping the roles will make it move faster. But I'm really interested to hear from people who are project leads, like, you know, maybe Ash and Andre, I don't know if there's anybody else in the virtual room, maybe at Falca, whether these these changes would speed things up and make things smoother, or whether you think there would be. But if you want to, like, I don't know, you don't have to respond right now. Yeah, maybe if, if folks want to kind of take a look at the PR, get a better sense of it, and then, you know, we can have the discussion there. Um, and you know, if everything is good, then I think it's it's due for a version. So thanks, Emily and Magno and the others who worked on this. Yep. One other thing that I wanted to highlight is um, the new template and the updated process does allow the community, the SIG community, to perform a limited hands-on a review of the projects. So that was something that was requested about, can we do it? How would we do it? What does that look like? We had, there's all sorts of um, caveats and instructions that we need to provide around that. How do we ensure a level of rigor? So there's been some careful attention pay, paid in that particular area about whether or not a review did include a hands-on review um, or if it didn't and what all that means. So just as, as you're going through the document, be aggressive and, and letting me know if there's stuff that we missed or stuff that wasn't fully thought through. No plan ever really survives contact with the enemy, that's it. So we really need to put it to test. But I, I think you've, you've covered a lot of considerations. It's really refined what we had, the process we had out loud, outlined previously. Awesome. Uh, Emily, is, is there anything else or oh, are we good here? No, nope, that's it. I'm looking. It might be worth mentioning the, the PR. Sorry, I, I, I cut up right there. Um, there's a companion PR um, that I requested being pulled out because it requires TOC approval. Which those? has been long requested, but is awaiting. We did. No, the. Um, okay. uh, what Sarah is referring to is um, originally when I what I, I had broken apart two of the PRs. There was a new docs, and then there was an update to existing docs, and it was too confusing, so I merged them together into 488. What Sarah is referring to is the new process or the updates to the process was designed to more closely align with the um, CNCF phases of in incubation and sandboxing and graduation, um, such that there was a, a clear kind of path for projects moving through those different phases. Uh, but because that requires discussion with the talk to um, for concurrence um, and confirmation that yes, that looks right and that's what they're looking for. We broke the, that out into a separate document. So you'll see some of the language in the 488 PR that doesn't, it looks like it could align with it, but it's not explicitly called out. So is this 534 or it's something yeah, else? Yeah, I just put a link okay. in the chat. So, um, so yeah, so the idea is that to first merge in the process improvements that are purely within the SIGS domain, right? And then propose to the TOC, this is how we would see it happening at different project stages, which then sets up this opportunity to make it a requirement mm -hmm. at some future time. Gotcha. Um, but obviously we're not in a position, maybe not to everybody, but um, we are not in a position to require anything of the projects. What we do is purely, you know, to the benefit of the community and the projects. 
Um, and then the um, TOC could choose to set it these things as requirements. Gotcha. <clears throat> awesome. Um, okay, so let's move on to the next agenda item, which is actually mine, <laughs> um, which is on the cloud native um, security landscape, which we have now renamed to the cloud native security map. Um, so I'm gonna give kind of a, a quick background on 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 what this is about. So uh, initially we we had the cloud native security white paper, and we had this kind of notion of landscape within um, the the six security repo, right? So if you go to the landscape, there are these categories that say, okay, this is access control, this is uh, key management, and here kind of like they tried to mimic the CNCF landscape where you know we have different categories and then you have projects within the different categories. Um, so what we found was that uh, that style of information or that style of categorization wasn't really very useful for um, what we wanted to do, which was to kind of provide a more practical use of um, the aspects of security. So kind of taking the, the topics that are in the white paper and provide a more, um, some more practical advice on how you can go about those things. Um, not just on the conceptual level, but also pointing directly to projects that will cover some of these areas. So let me share my screen um, really quickly and show. Oh, I can't share my screen. Uh, my MacBook is preventing me from doing that. Um, let me see what I can resolve this quickly. Do you want me to share it? Yeah. Uh, let me let me put the link in the in the. In the chat and then if you can open this, that'd be great. Also, if I reset the Zoom really quick, I should be able to share it. Yeah, I so. got it. That may be faster, so I'm just gonna drop and come back really quick. Okay. All right. So, um, Okay. Uh, can you see my screen now? Yep. Okay, cool. So cloud native security map, um, this is the new name. Um, so the, the kind of um, motivation around the same when we, we brainstorm about this and we voted on it uh, was around kind of, we, we took a lot of inspiration from uh, the cloud native trail map. So we looked at the CNCF landscape, which was kind of just like a whole ball of information, which uh, we didn't really find um, that useful in terms of what we wanted to do. But then we looked at the cloud native show map, which kind of um, was uh, contained information about the projects, a bit more technical information, but it also provided a way for um, practitioners to kind of navigate the cloud native space. So we wanted to kind of mimic um, this kind of um, layout of information. So someone should be able to go um, to this document and really be able to explore cloud native, um, go, go into areas which are important to them to be able to figure out how they should approach cloud native. Um, so the idea is we would, uh, we would make kind of a hybrid between the, the original landscape um, and something that more closely uh, resembles this um, CNCF trail map. Uh, so what we ended up with, uh, we called it cloud native security map. 
and it was around there was a lot of um ideas around you know there being multiple continents which represent categories of security and then you would be able to navigate and go through these areas and learn about security through that um so the 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 work is in the site channel six security geography this was when we still didn't have a name for it uh, but we knew it, we wanted to have it be something with maps um, so the, the overall landscape goal here is uh, basically to provide a um, more practical view of um, the cloud native security white paper so the white paper covers everything on a conceptual level it covers kind of the different categories um, but then the the question that that if you're a practitioner you may want to answer is like how do i go about doing this what are some of the resources that i can look at and what are some of the projects that i should look at in order to implement this um, so this is a general idea of what the cloud native security map is about um, and so the idea is that we're going to take the information and we're going to be able to encode it in a format which is um, easier for someone that's new to this to navigate through so the idea is to have kind of a, a different continents of different categories of security and one should be able to navigate between these things so these are a few pictures that uh, emily has kindly drawn up um, which kind of show like oh you have different islands of security categories and then you can explore them and then you have to go through like from develop to distribute and you know what are the steps that you're going through it so in this case um, for example to go from develop to uh, distribute you go through the sea of scanning and also kind of thematic um, example here and then this is okay then you're looking at um, uh, pre-commit hooks doing application manifest scanning and so on and you finally arrive at the sm harbor um, so that's the general idea in which we want to have people be able to explore the, the, the topics within the landscape. And we imagine that, um, so this is the last artistic version that uh, I, I drew up, which kind of talks about maybe like example flow of how people would use this. So the idea is they will start off with um, very broad categories or another way you could do it is um, if we would embed links of the security map into the white paper itself so if you're reading through the white paper you see a concept that you're interested in you can say okay bring me to the security map on this and then it will link you into uh, this document that will tell you for this particular concept what are the projects and how do you use it in terms of uh, adopting it in your organization so the idea here is you will be able to go into different um, areas to give you information about it um, and, you know, you could go into, for example, image scanning, it'll tell you a bit more, they talk about technologies that you can use and so on. And the idea of this is, for example, within uh, certain categories, for example, image trust and integrity. Um, you could go to like the next step in distribution, which, okay, maybe I should encrypt the image, but also related to image trust and integrity on the, the distribute and develop time is also the runtime protection, right? Uh, even if you sign or you, you add trust into uh, the artifacts that you're creating, you still need a way to enforce it in the runtime. And therefore, you know, it's important to also look at, you know, protecting the workloads of runtime, how they do key management and so on. Um, so this was, uh, this is kind of like the idea behind this is that we realized that there are a lot of different categories within um, cloud native security. Um, some kind of span different different um, categories, such as you know, in this case, image trust, where you have it, you need to do it when you're developing and distributing a a container image or artifact. By the end, at the same time, it only makes sense if you have good key management and you also enable verification of the runtime. Um, so these are the kind of ideas that, that we were thinking, right? Being able to see this information and being able to navigate this information, I think, are one of the main goals that we're trying to achieve here. Um, so, and you know, you can just navigate this however you want. So that is kind of what 
we are trying to do with this here the cloud native security map. Um, so we are now going towards uh, phase two, which is kind of content contribution and design iteration. Uh, we hope to get all this uh, done in time for KubeCon EU, and we'll hopefully do some publicizing of um, this project then, uh, like we did with the cloud native security white paper. So um, kind of to wrap up what we're doing now is really we are, we are looking at how do we um, populate the content of this, right? So uh, we have this document, which is for the content. And this is an example of content, right? So we have application manifests. Um, and this is a template that we came up with. You have some one or two sentence motivation on why it's important. Um, threats and incidents if they are available. So this is kind of similar to uh, what we see in the security uh, supply chain catalog where, okay, what are some examples or incidents that happened because there was a lapse in security in this area. Um, a quick description on uh, the, the security relation, um, quick recommendations of what can be done to protect it. And instances of those recommendations. So these are more concrete examples. So in this case, and uh, we're saying application manifest can be Kubernetes YAMLs. You know, you don't want to use the latest tag. You don't want to, to run continuous as privilege or run as root users uh, and so on. And we would have projects and references that we could have also, right? Um, so that's where we are today. Um, we want to be able to populate this for basically all the different categories that we had in the white paper. So there will be some, definitely some reuse of content over there. Uh, what we would really be adding on is really here, what are the projects uh, involved with this and what are some of the more concrete recommendations and examples. Um, so going forward is um, this document has been populated we have kind of one on each page. So I think what we're gonna uh, strive for is to, to get contributions across the community to populate this document. And then we will integrate it into um, um, the cloud native security map that we showed earlier. Um, so, I'm going to put the, the, the link to the issue in the chat. Um, and also I'll put a few notes on um, how, how we can contribute to the content here. Um, any, any questions about this, comments? So, so Brandon, at this point, if folks want to say contribute to a particular section within the, the content doc, uh, are we like maintaining a spreadsheet of uh, you know who's writing for what content, or do you recommend them joining the Slack channel, or do you recommend them joining the the meeting that we have before this call, like the bi-weeklies or whatever? So, what's the recommended way here for folks to join in? So, so we'll organize another kind of check-in um, next week before this meeting. Uh, but I would I, I'm gonna put like a set of instructions. What it's gonna be like is basically find a topic that you want to write about and then just put like a name here. Actually, um, related to that, if we can comment, I think a uh, few other six have also reached out to Emily, uh, trying to replicate Emily's process of how she ran the white paper, uh, and there is. There is a need to document that process and if we can get volunteers that have worked in white paper to help document the process, that'll be, that'll be useful even for the landscape, I would think. Yeah, there's actually an open issue on that, JJ. Uh, let me find the issue number. I had talked to Vinay and Vinay said he was very interested in volunteering for that. But I do know that it is a big ask because there was a lot of stuff that went on. So is I there, will find the issue and drop it. Yeah. Is there a, a section in the doc or a place in the process that I can uh, start coming in for emerging technologies, things that aren't yet in cognitive landscape, but that folks are interested in and I'd like to help support more folks using? 
So, so we do have one section. Um, so, so this um just kind of, this is just a photocopy of the the topics that is are uh, in the cognitive security white paper. Uh, we do have, I think the the section. Um, actually, I should have the white paper here somewhere. Um, there is a section on uh, the white paper that I think is extensible to, to other topics. Um, yeah, so there is kind of secure, um, security stack. This kind security of stack. Okay. is what we put a lot of the emerging things like yeah. uh, we did zero trust architecture. Yeah, end-to-end -end encryption covering, you know, encryption in use as well, zero trust architecture, that's exactly the area I'd, I'd like to step in and help out. Yeah, so, so I would say the, the best approach for that is kind of contributing to the white paper and then, you know, these things, would, would we would sync up on these things with the landscape or the, the map as well. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to put this issue in the notes as well as I'll put it down the Slack channel as well as some instructions on uh, how to contribute to the content. Um, and also figure out with Vinay and Emily on maybe we can discuss on that and document some of those steps as well. Cool. Um, so I think that's all that we have for today. Um, next week we have Doug, who's going to talk about, um, the service working group. Um, yeah. And, um, it'd be great if I could have a volunteer who would facilitate that. Um, I do need somebody from the, are you, did you I, I signed up, but, but if anyone wants to do a facilitation, I'm more than happy to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe somebody who's like there's a team interested in um, serverless security. It'd be great to have one of them, but anyone really who's going to keep the meeting on track and make sure Q and A happens. Yeah, so so if you're interested in facilitating the meeting, um, there is a planned meeting sections in the meeting notes. So. Um, you can just put in your name there and then you can reach out to one of the the, the chairs or TLs um, to talk about what, what you need to, to, to know just to do the facilitation. Cool. Awesome. Just, just a quick note, Brendan, to all the new folks out there. So we are, we are adding a new section to the doc, which uh, list some of the good first issues to get started with some low hanging fruit issues. So we'll keep on adding more issues to that tag in GitHub. So if you all are interested in like just contributing to any kind of you know issues with six security, uh, feel free to check out that section. Thanks. Awesome. So on this way, I think we are uh... There are no other topics for today. So if there's nothing else, then we can give you back another eight minutes. Yeah, it's awesome. just the usual fire hose here. <laughs> this is uh this is where we start the improv, right? Yeah. All right. Thank you everyone. Thanks, Brandon. See you next week.